Yes. So we're going to start recording this uh, webinar so that you can watch it after. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you everyone for joining today for this exciting webinar. Uh, I'm very excited to have our guest, Tamia Destiny, here with us today, and she will be talking about how to stand out in a job interview. Some of the things that Tammy will be covering today is mastering the art of interviewing with a step-by-step -step guide and how to effectively uh, prepare for an interview. So a little bit about Tammy. Tammy is a director at Thompson Ritters. She is also a career coach with Canadian Ship, and she has helped over 50 people land a high paying tech job using a true tested uh, techniques. So Tammy, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Perfect. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. I can up. hear you. Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, I see people are just joining in. So we're going to start with a little uh, question and answer. Can you all see my screen? Yep, we can see your screen. Okay, perfect. So in the chat, I'm going to be asking you all, how was your day? Um, you can put your response in the chat if you want to. So was it exciting? Uh, mine was very busy. For some of you, was it tiring? Um, it would take like two minutes to talk about that. Uh, let me show the chat. Ah, oh, most people, blah, busy. Okay. Still busy. Oh, yes. That's end of quarter, excitingly busy. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Tiring, quiet, busy. Okay. All right. For some, for most people, it's either busy or tiring um, or black. So I'll try to keep it exciting because you've all been very busy. I don't want to stress you. Uh, could be better. Yes, I agree. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to stand out in a job interview as a career switcher. This is also applicable if you're not switching careers, but you're also trying to get into a, a, new, uh, a new role. So therefore, let's uh, start. If you can hear me, let me know, and I can adjust my mic. So who am I? I'm currently the director for automation at Thompson Riders. Um, apart from that, I like to teach. So I've been a professor this year teaching machine learning, as well as um, fixing another school's data science curriculum. So in general, I like to teach. Apart from that, I'm also a career coach. So I've helped a lot of people get jobs. Um, I've mixed techniques from my own experience, people's experience. I also have a coach. So your coach must always have a coach else. They're really not advancing as much as they should be. And hobbies, I like meeting new people through volunteering. So you catch me arranging chairs at seminars. I'm that girl, I like to dance. Uh, I can dance for like three hours straight once I'm happy. And then I like to travel too. So that's... Uh, a little bit about me. So let's get to the agenda. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through um, three things. One is prepping before the interview. The other is uh, during the interview and then post interview. So before we get started, any questions? No, yes, keep going. Going once, twice, got. Okay. So let's get to prepping before the interview. Now, this is where you're going to do a lot of heavy lifting. And what I'm about to explain is something that I've done, I keep doing, and I will continue to do. And the thing is that um, these tips are actually very helpful. There are times you might not have to employ all of them, but there are times um, you might have to just take a few of them and then go forward to your interview. So... The first thing I want to say is build your profile. So first of all, decide if you're industry agnostic or not. What does that mean? Do you just want to stay in the financial services sector as let's say project or product manager or business analyst? Or are you generic? Hey, I can work in the financial sector. Um, 
I can work in the financial sector. I can work in banking. I can work in fintech, like just across domain, across board, or um, you just want to like just stick to one particular industry. And you have to decide that. And why is that important? Financial project managers will definitely have the same story as an engineering uh, project manager. So either you look for commonalities within that industry to put as your experience, or you actually decide to just, just focus on one particular industry. Um, again, it's up to you. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just pick, pick exactly what works for you. <clears throat> so I'll give example for myself. I've worked in telecoms consulting, um, previously worked at a 5G networking company called Sienna, and I was doing multiple things. I was wearing multiple hats, but at the end of the day, I would still call myself a technology professional. So what does that mean? In as much as I've been a data scientist here, I have been a business analyst also for cloud migrating to, for cloud technology too, as well as being an innovation program manager, um, as well as being a business intelligence engineer, being automation project manager, it's it all comes down to, hey, I like to create new things using technology. So I'm a technology professional. So after you've built out what that looks like, even if you're switching careers, you can say, okay, you know what? I've always been in sales. Um, now I'm switching to probably customer success. At the end of the day, you're creating experience for clients um, on behalf of a company. So you're an experienced person, experienced manager. One quote I like to say is creativity is pure gold, no matter what you do for a living. Um, the most valuable resource you can bring to work and to your firm is your creativity. That's exactly what you're paid for. You're not just paid because you have a MSc or a BSc is exactly what you can do for the company. And um, more than that, more than what you get done, more than the role you play, more than your title, more than your output, but your creativity to work is exactly what matters. So let's get down to the meat of it. So let's talk about creating your storyboard. Now, this is the first step I always ask everyone to do. And what does that look like? You're gonna take this metrics that I have up here. You're gonna create a story card and you're gonna um, place it in the square according to the job description. So what does that mean? For me, I would sit there and say, okay, what were the major project that I did in my previous jobs, not just my previous job, but all the jobs I've had? What were the quick wins that I could sell? What were the low value jobs that I did? So for example, let's say, um, trying to simulate data to fit a particular story um, on a dashboard, that's an example, it was low value to me because it doesn't tie directly to like my innovation skill set. And what were the feeling jobs? Someone went on vacation, you had to help out. In as much as coordinating the little thing, that's a feeling job that you all have to write on a Word document. So the thing is, I tend to use Google Drive because I can always update on the fly. And now that you have that, you want to put in what the problem was, what tools you use, what results. But I'll go into details about that. So next thing, once you have this, it's very hard sometimes to remember what you've done. Like I can't remember some of the things, what, what I had probably like three days ago, how much more job I did eight years ago. But um, remember, even if you're switching careers, you still want to have a picture of the exact things that you've done. So one easy way is to actually go on LinkedIn and use job descriptions. This one is very key. A lot of people don't do it. But go on LinkedIn, select a job posting with a very detailed description. Most times you find out that it's media, it's, sorry, it's um, mid to senior level roles that actually have this extremely detailed job, job, uh, job descriptions because they know who they're looking for and they're paying good money so they can as well get the best of what they want. So once you have that, I always advise people to go for three to four. So for example, let's say I'm looking for a product manager opportunity. I will go on LinkedIn, put product manager. I slightly prefer to search 
with a US location because it gives me like you see more diverse postings from there. You can also check with Canada, it doesn't mind. And then I will go to the experience level, filter that out and select mid-level, director level, VP level, even if I'm below a manager, that's the reason. And then I will copy every single of these postings that look detailed just like this. So this is what a detailed um, job posting looks like. This is another one that looks very detailed. Um, this is also another one that looks detailed. And this one is not very detailed. And then you see why I say you need a detailed one later on uh, in the process. So again, I will copy all, I mean, every single line, including the technical skills, what you need to bring to the role, all of that stuff inside a Google Sheets. Once I do that, then let me make sure I'm gonna skip a slide. Okay, once I do that, then I'm gonna have to read through to come up with a profile schema of who they're looking for. So the more diverse job posting for specific role, the better you can come up with what this looks like. So for example, this is uh, a digital business analyst that I just picked up from Bombardier. And what I will do is I will start to read and look for the keywords. So think of, so switch roles, switch hats and say, okay, if I'm hiring, who do I exactly need? What type of skill sets do I need? Both soft and hard skill. If you look at this, one of them is big data, cutting edge technology, user-centric digital solutions and application, deliver digital experience, um, implement and sustain digital product, product development. So I will start to create a running list of the things that they actually want to see. Sometimes most of them are not realistic considering the level and the road they're hiring for. So even if it's not realistic, just still put them as your, um, your profile schema. And there's a reason for that. So once you've done that, um, I think I have an activity here because I need to get in pitch. So can you take a look at what I have here and try to see if you can probably type in the chat or unmute your mic and tell me what keywords do you see here if you're actually the hiring manager? So what keywords or what skill sets do you think you want to see someone bring in from a profile perspective? So I give you guys like a minute to read. Agile methodologies, that's fine. Keep becoming Jira, good. Agile practices, that's one. Any other one? Communication skills, exactly, that's good. Exactly, I was waiting for organizational skills. Yes, that is very important. Figma, okay, so you guys get the gist. Aviation industry is another one, team player, good, good, good. Okay, so let's keep it moving. Now, once you have that running list, then you ask yourself, um, who do they want to see show up at the interview? Most times, when you look at a job posting, before they go to requirements, they'll tell you the exact profile of the person they want. So right here, you can see as a senior manager, you leak key snails, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this one is just a summary of what they need for you to bring. So you actually want to note this down and say, okay, when I'm introducing myself, I need to, my first three to four sentences of tell me about yourself needs to showcase the skill sets. And the thing is, I know a lot of people struggle with, tell me about yourself. Um, one thing is that once you start to read this job descriptions, like go two levels above you, I'm telling you, go two levels above you. Once you start to read it, then you start to, you start to imagine yourself, like when someone asks you, what type of job do you want? Like, oh, this is the job I want. So when you're introducing yourself, you want to tell them, well, I'm a project, I'm a product manager who has created X and um, who creates like product roadmap for a hundred million dollar product, blah, 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 and working across that, that, anyway. So what you want to do is to just pick out exactly the summary. And if we go to the other job descriptions that I have, you can see them explaining what the CD office does, what you would do also. So this is another job description as a summary. 
um, right here, they don't really have it. So not really. Uh, let's see if this other one, okay, this other one has it. And then this other one also has it. So as you can see, you want to be able to put that down and then just, just, just place a sticky on it. But anyway, let's keep moving. You see why. Now, this is the part where a lot of people don't like to do the work because it's very tasking, but I'll teach you exactly how to navigate through it. So you want to take each line, I mean, each line, and then put in, put that in your Word document, right? Because you have each line. And then you will think about it. What project have I done? that addresses this or what experiences do I have? So it might even be an experience entirely. So let's say you're, you're a product manager now, but you worked in, I'm looking for an industry, you worked in healthcare. Um, one way is probably you're trying to pivot into healthcare product management, right? It is okay saying for this particular requirement, what did I do in my previous job? And if you don't even have it in your previous job, if you were enrolled with SkillArt or you've taken a course, even if it was an assignment, I mean, assignment, put it there and say, okay, this is exactly what I did for this particular job description. And remember that your problem statement should be centered around three things. When people say, um, um, what, what is that word they say? Um, we care about the environment. like. Environment, we care about the environment. When companies say that, if they're not making money, my dear, they don't yet care about the environment. So at the end of the day, irrespective of whatever social clause the company has, everything still centers around increasing revenue, reducing costs, improving business efficiency. So that's exactly what you want to showcase in every project you, you do. Sometimes it's not a direct linkage, but then you have to see that and not ask yourself, what is the end goal of this project that I've done? It fits into one of this buckets so i'll give an example but once you have this done then you want to remember the teams that you worked with and why this is important is because sometimes on jd's they'll say i've experienced working with a scrum master i've experienced working with a product owner a ui ux designer even if you haven't worked with them something else i will teach you you can as well read papers to show people to show project that you know some of the skill sets were used on and so when you're narrating your experience, you can as well say, well, I built this and this, although I didn't have a UX designer on my project, here was I went through the design. You must have all thought about design one way or the other. And you can as well read it in a consulting paper or a company's marketing paper or sales sheets, but I explain how to come up with that. So anyway, after you write that, then you wanna write what your responsibilities were. Now, you might not, you might just have a little bit of a task to do on that project, but you were in that team, you obviously partook in that project. So definitely it's your project too. So even if your responsibility was very minute, you can also say, well, the project was about this, although I created this, I helped, this helped X, X team member, X team member, X team member build this. So now that's the collaboration aspect that you are showcasing, not just you sitting there saying, hey, I don't know how the test plan I created helps increase revenue. Well, it actually helps increase efficiency because if you didn't test it properly, someone will have used it the wrong way. Moving on, you want to also talk about the technology, the risk that uh, you have to account for. Everyone has a risk they have to account for respect to whatever they do. The implementation, how did the team, if not even you, go about implementing it? What was the timeline? What was the budget change management? Sometimes you don't have all this information. That is fair, but you want to make sure that if you're explaining five projects or five experiences that you bring to a table, two has this one way or the other. If you don't have the exact number, think about it, come up with a number, okay? But make sure the number is justifiable. <laughs> Now, the other thing you want to um, say is the end result. So again, at the end of the day, tie it back to the business KPI. Now, post-management, I always say this, a project should not die when I leave a company. Um, I know there's certain levels you get to that you can as well enforce that. But at the same time, it's, it's irrespective of whatever you do is being able to say, hey, after I rolled off this company, I learned X and X and X, or this is still existent. 
um, before I, I left or something. You just want to showcase that to show that you actually still buy into what you're doing. So for people that are just joining, I will do a recap. We talked about how to come up, how to create your story. And I said, look for JDs, so job descriptions that are at least two levels above you or a level above you, if you want to go that. And collect all the job requirements that are very detailed, put it in a Google sheet, and then come up with this framework, okay? Come up with contents like this. So I gave an example for myself, but before that example, um, there's something I also want to note is that when you're coming up with what those requirements look like, sometimes there are questions that you can also look up online from Glassdoor. Um, if it's a new role, then I'm sorry. The time it happened to me where, in fact, two of the of the last roles I got, they were, they were actually new roles. But what I did was I went through those keywords myself and I started looking for questions that they could ask across those keywords. So in as much as there was no Glassdoor review or a Glassdoor bank of questions, I created my own questions and it helped me in the interview process. There's also another site called I Got an Offer that you can check and Big Interview is another Another website that I really like, I used it very early on in my career and still like a few a few months ago, just to wrap up on some things, um, it actually helped me. So get all those questions, look at the answers too. It will help you also come up with some of, um, some of these details. Any questions before I move to the next slide? Questions? Uh, I'll keep for a minute. You can unmute your mic and then ask. Okay, no questions, let's keep you going because I still have exciting stuff. So this was an example for myself. I went to a job interview, um, I think in, in June, and then this was exactly what I did. I wrote what my problem statement was, the objective, what I did, um, and answering this question, how I went about it. I even had pictures of the frameworks that I used. Um, some of them, I had to look for frameworks online, although I still did it, but I just didn't have a framework. Anyway, moving on. Now, because you're collecting requirement across several job postings, some of them might be a duplicate. So you wanna lump them together, but I'll say lump like three to four um, together and then have like two different project per requirement. At the end of the day, when I look at my own sheet, my sheet runs to like 12 pages. <laughs> And the thing is that I would always go back to this shit, even when I probably, probably I'm changing jobs in a few years, I can go back to that shit, update it and continue in my journey. So that's one way. Now, sometimes this is very hard to create, you know, even after using job descriptions, you're like, oh my Lord, I don't know how to structure this properly. So what can you do in crafting out that story? There's several ways, but I'm highlighting three for now. One is, again, leverage job descriptions from current and past roles. So let's say you're applying for a project manager role, and in your previous job, you were project associate. If I don't remember, me, I've gone to LinkedIn and looked at project associate job descriptions. I'm like, oh my God, I did this. I wasn't a project associate, but I'm just saying, like, oh my God, I did this, I did this, I did this. And that actually helps me come up with my story. Another thing is stalk people. Amen. Look at people with similar roles on LinkedIn and look at the project they did, that they've done. I just be like, yeah, I actually did this. Copy and paste. So far, you can defend it. Don't lie. The other thing is use consulting project summaries or sales sheets or just um, a product sheets too. So let's look at that. What does that look like? This one, a lot of people sleep on it is very useful. So I'm a little biased because I worked at Deloitte, but I like to read Accenture, McKinsey, Deloitte. I actually subscribe to their newsletter just so I can keep up on the narration of my own project, even at my work uh, place. So let's say you work in supply chain. You can as well put something called supply chain case studies. Look for, this is SCM Globe. Look at it, see how they, how they frame their project. So in this case, um, we're going to be using Deloitte's own and let's copy this link and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. 
see. Chrome, give me a second. Okay. Okay, so I just Googled um, um, consulting story for this, but if you're in business analyst and there's a particular project you work on, let's say fitness app, um, I know, I know someone here that worked on that. You can as well look look at fitness apps um, sales sheets, like product sheets. That way, you see how they structure it. The thing is, they actually hire proper communication experts to come up with all of this stuff. So why not leverage somebody else's knowledge? That's how life is. Leverage people's knowledge to build up for your own. But in this example, I'm gonna be showing you. Let's look at Novant Health. Okay, so. They give a background of Novant Health. So if I'm explaining my project, I say, well, I worked at a company with 24,000 employees and, phys and physician partners who were trying to deliver patient experience. Check, check, check. And then I will go to um, how they did it. Like, what was the problem on how they did it? They had to restructure their IT department to build stability for probably the volume of work that they were getting. This is how they also did it what Deloitte did. So this is the point where you're like, this is what I did. And then you just tick. So far you did it. Change the numbers because the numbers are sometimes different. And I think you can also download the client, the client spotlight story to get like a good view of what that is. And just copy and paste. You can see all the things that they do. These are like requirements for the scope of work. Use that and keep it moving. Put it in your document, okay? So that's one way to go about it, but let's continue to the slide. One thing I must say, it does take time to find very good consulting materials or project sales sheets or the summaries of project. So the thing is look at it where you're less busy, else if you're trying to get everything one night, you go for streets, okay? Now let's talk about if you lack experience in that particular field, if you're a career switcher. So for example, I had someone who was an oil and gas engineer in Nigeria come to Canada and is like, Timmy, I actually want to switch. I'm like, well, should you entirely switch? Why don't you look for other skill set that is complementary to your oil and gas? And then go into that industry it's like, no, Timmy, I'm completely switching. So I would realistically tell you that it does take time. <laughs> to break into the industry if you have no experience. However, there, there are also ways to improve your chances. So one is, if you lack experience and somebody calls you, there is a reason they called you. There is always a reason. So keep that at the back of your mind. Try to find a value proposition where you can, what, what, try to find a value proposition where you, where you can, and then bring that from your previous experience into your new role. So it's a typo there. So I'll give an example. When I was looking to leave um, Deloitte because I wanted an entire change, I went on Google and I was looking for new roles in AI. So I didn't want to be a data science manager. And I kept looking um, at some point when I was desperate to like leave, nothing happened. I knew it was Holy Spirit checking me. So I started to chill a bit and start to cherry pick my project to say, okay, I went ahead to build my own profile. I did the same thing, looking for job descriptions that were exciting. I built my own role. That role didn't exist. And then I took the keywords from my Google search for the new roles that are in the industry and something struck out then before people even start going into it. It was called Automation Solutions Architect. So when I started looking at those jobs, they existed in the automobile industry. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do that because I've done a research for one of my partners on that. And it wasn't quite the best when I, when I was cool calling this company. Anyway, so what I did was I kept looking at my leisure. Now nah, I was in desperate. And then I saw this role at Sienna. I do not know what Sienna offered. I didn't know their product, their services. I think I called my brother that day. I was like, I think I got an interview at Sienna. What is that? And then he like stayed walking me through it. But when I submitted my, when I saw the job post, I called my friend who had like tons of experience in him. I'm going to come and apply. And it's like, no, I still want to stay at Deloitte. So I applied. Now they asked for someone that had 15 years experience. Um, some of you know my age, so I'll not review my age. But that means I was I was really not working. Like there's no I could have been working, but I still applied. 
what I did was I looked at those job descriptions. I looked at the job, the job keywords. I'm like, hey, I have 60, 60% of this. I'm going to apply. It sounds like a fun job. So when they saw my resume, this is what my manager told me even on the call. It was like, Kimmy, we figured out that we were hiring wrong, that you were just going to bring a fresh new perspective into this role. And that's because when I looked at the JD itself, I looked at um, what they were looking to do. I went and stalked the leaders and I thought, wow, they just changed the leaders within like three years, which means they're looking for fresh ideas. And then I thought about it. I don't have 40% of the experience, but I have this other experience that I can bring into the role. And then I got like seven interviews. Five of them said yes, two of them said no, but got past them, <laughs> I got the job. Uh, another thing with my Thompson Rider story, I was actually approached for one role and then I, I I I was like okay you know what I'm open to a chat but I knew I was going to turn it down so when the the um the VP came on the call with the other director I'm like well I don't like this role I showed them the one I created here's what I like and she was like ah, I think we've actually you know been thinking about this wrong and then they created the role for me so what I might say in essence is try to create your own role if you are just entering into the industry i know it might be hard because you really want a job well you can as well take any job you see but i'll tell you not to stay there like still continuously apply because at the end of the day you want to use your skill sets okay now another thing to do is read tons of articles on project done in that industry and once you read that, you start to get ideas of project that you can actually sell during your interview because you're like, hey, I think I can do this. Create it or volunteer to work for a firm or get a part-time job in a field where you can probably fulfill, if you have 60%, let's say that 40% is really crucial. You can actually say, okay, you know what? This 15%, I can probably get in a part-time job or a volunteer thing. So for example, when I finished school, I didn't know what I had to do initially. But then I was interested in, I got a job in a digital company and I had to quit after a month. I'm not going to that. They did not frustrate me, nothing. It was me that said to quit on my own. But I, I liked it. So what I did was I actually called up my uncle who had a hotel. I'm like, you know what? Let me create Google ads for you. And I started running that stuff. I wrote the certification. Because I got on that job in Google um, in digital media. But I'm like, you know what? I think I want to switch to uh bi with what i'm doing because sometimes i do switch fast <laughs> but anyway that's exactly what you can do right now so decide to create something for a family member or whatever or yourself put create something called freelance they don't have it's not a company yes but to be a freelance person and put those experiences on your resume remember you were called for a reason i don't think i'll see a resume that i'm not interested in i still scared an interview when i'm not totally interested you know Anyways, let's keep it moving. Now, another thing you want to do before your interview is to profile your interviewer. This one, very crucial. So go on LinkedIn, check what they post or what they like to post. I've run into scenarios where I didn't actually find that person on LinkedIn at all. They don't like LinkedIn. So there was something else I did and I'll show you. Um, when you're on LinkedIn, go to the likes and then go to the the post. So if you see that they're commenting on way to go, awesome, this is so good. You can tell that they're very expressive. So on your during your interview, um, your interview, you want to be expressive, but not too expressive. So you don't bore out your interviewer. But I'll show you how to actually use business chemistry to nerd you in how to profile your your interviewer now also pick up the phone and ask your recruiter what skill sets do they need i actually do this on the job i'm like hey i'm interviewing with this evp and this director what skill sets or what do they like to see what is the personality type and then she told me that and I actually use that ahead of my interview as the recruiters another thing is google check them do they have a dog i remember one interview i had uh, that time we had seven dogs in my house and this person had a little dog and you know how people love dogs as babies here back home is <laughs> the opposite so i'm like hey i have seven dogs after we had chatted you know and i'm like hey i have seven dogs i see your dog it's an obsession i say i looked you up yes i looked you up okay <laughs> you don't like that sorry but i looked you up i'll tell them the other thing is 
check the career progression. This one says a whole lot about someone. So if, for example, I am a manager who has been in that role for eight years and I have not moved. Now, I'm, just, I'm constantly updating my profile on LinkedIn. It might just be that maybe I have not updated it. But if in the scenario where you can tell that this person is actually active and they've been in a role for eight years on LinkedIn, you don't want to go into that role and start to challenge them that I think X can be done. Y can be really done. In as much as you're proposing things, you know, you also want to acknowledge them because they are coming with, I know more than you. But anyway, I will show you how to go about that conversation. So again, this shouldn't be used as fact, but it's their opinions to guide how you're thinking of the person that's going to interview you. Sometimes you might actually get the interview name an hour to your interview. You can as well just pick out the key ones that are here to do before that. Now, profile your company. Um, again, I mentioned it's going on LinkedIn. You can see the number of people that were hired. If everyone, for example, when I was in my own interview, I saw that within two years, they actually had a whole bunch of people, which means that they're looking for new talent and stuff. Um, check the CEO's posts and company posts to understand strategic direction of the company. Um, your story should also show leadership if this is exactly what is happening, leadership and innovation. Now, again, ask the recruiter. Uh, yeah, I think it's type of, So ask the recruiter what skill sets are crucial to that role in that particular company because you they might have something else on their JD, but what they're looking for is definitely different. So you still want to ask that, okay, in this company, what the most people have, you know? Um, another thing is Google them. So check their newest product, check if they just got funding. You know, that means they can pay you high salary to an extent. Um, diversity on LinkedIn. So this one was very funny. So I actually got a job offer, but it wasn't written, but it ended up declining. I went on this company's profile and I saw that there were 400 people in that company. They hired about 120 and they were still going to continue hiring, but they were just two blacks. Again, they were mostly Asian and um, white people. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. it's a personal thing. Again, does not mean some people say, take it and go and change the system. I Me, mean, I don't want to change the system at that moment. <laughs> so I didn't take it. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to struggle a little bit here because I've had similar experiences where it didn't go well. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just take a little back seat for now. So you want to check that. Then another thing you want to check is, this is actually it's not LinkedIn, it's a typo, but you want to check Google, check their balance sheet. So I remember I'm always changing my job during a economy turned out. I don't know how it works, but it actually happens. So when I was going to work at Siena and I was leaving Deloitte, I had someone tell me, um, oh, they're firing people right now. You shouldn't be changing jobs. And that thing got to me. I remember talking to my brother. I'm like, oh, what if they rescind my offers? Because they were rescinding people's offer. And then I prayed about it. And then, I just woke up and I went and checked their balance sheet, right? The last two quarters. I saw that they were pumping money into RD, like more money into RD, and they're just reducing cost a little bit, but they were literally pumping money. And I saw that what the product and services they did, there was no how they were not going to make money during the pandemic because it was network optimization. So I looked at it and I'm like, well, this even means that I will get like exciting projects to do. And for my from the interview even confirmed that so i'm like you know what i'll take it and then i made the move and then deloitte and other fine people after so what am i saying in essence is like you also want to profile your company mm -hmm. i'll take questions very soon but another thing before your interviews i'm yourself with key questions so as you start to do this research you should have a series of business culture and technical questions one question i like to ask is what is the most frustrating thing on this job or your own job <laughs> because that would tell me if there's even a deal breaker for myself. Um, so you can ask the question, like what's the frustrating thing you're experiencing working in X company? Because the job is only different from the company itself. Then what would you like to see me do in three, six to 12 months? These are, you know, if they're going to kill you with a lot of work and they offer you peanuts, you know, the press or probably they want you to build a skyscraper in maybe a day when you're like, mm, back out. And you can also ask about the technology stack because some people still use desktop 
at home. They are sending their staff desktop, not laptop. So everywhere you go, you carry your desktop. Anyway, so you want to ask about that. Then who determines the type of projects the team works on? This is very crucial. That way, you know if the direction comes from the top or if the direction comes from the old team members. That would actually tell you like, hey, you know what? I wouldn't have control of the kind of project I work on. Or somebody might just say, hey, shut that down. I shut that down. I think it's actually a good question to ask. Then the last one of the interviews I had previously, I asked them, the lady changed job in three months. I'm like, you too, why did you change your job in <laughs> three months? And it was good to actually hear what, what she said. Then this was the point where I saw like two United employers joined within two years. And I'm like, well, where did the book come from? You know? Um, and then she's like, oh, we're actually building this automation, blah, blah. It was, it was a product company. And then I also asked, hey, the CEO just started two years ago. What has been the culture change? You want to be able to see if they moved from, you know, some companies are actually like, they don't really talk to themselves. And then the new CEO comes in and breaks down that barrier. So you want to be able to tell certain cultural fit. There are more questions, but these are some of the things I think might be interesting to ask. Now, any questions before we jump to join the interview? Because this one is my favorite. Questions? Hey, Tammy, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so for the company profile, do you get all the information of Google or their like uh, their website? Because that's a lot of information. Like what exactly do you actually search? Because sometimes uh, when you look into like a profile, I don't think you get all the information. Do you actually just search exactly yeah. those words? Yes, I actually do. Like I do intern searches. And here's the thing. It's, I know to decline an interview after they've scheduled to say, you know, I don't want to work for this company. It saves me time. And by favor to, by the grace of God, like I haven't gone to any interview and not gotten the job. Like I have never, like first go interview me talking to you, not the write an essay. I've literally gotten that. So look on Google, look on LinkedIn, um, look on different media, like Globe and Mail, just the core, I always stick to the first pages of my Google search or the second page if I want to. And then I dump that information there. So I'm more strategic on the role, not even the company. I'm not a person I also work at Meta or I work at Google. I really don't care. I like mid-sized companies because they pay more. But anyway, I'm in a big size company now. They say reason I chose it. Again, it ties back to my reason. But what I'll say is, um, yeah, if you if if you are if you are very strategic, you know, okay, I'm doing these five interviews. You know, I really want to do my research, giving my best, and move. At the end of the day, even when you have another company, the only thing you're switching is actually the company profile because you have built out your profile for that role. So you actually are just going to reread. But the only thing is just doing the company research itself. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, uh, I'll take questions, but let me move on to this one. This one is my favorite, like I said. Um, so let's talk about business chemistry. Uh, I learned this at Deloitte where the, the, this, we had, I think it's like, it's like school and they teach you these things and they actually have people uh, role plays and then you have to guess and you have to adjust your communication. I think this is very crucial in any interview or even at work too, you know, and it's an ongoing thing where you have to keep developing yourself. So business chemistry, the four types of business chemistry. Um, one is pioneer, I'll explain what this is, guardian, drivers, and integrators. So let me go to the main, the main link. This one, it will really, really help you in your interview. So let's use this one. And ah, okay. So um, everyone has their own business chemistry, just how you do things, how you talk, what is important to you. So everyone has a dominant one, but then sometimes you can actually switch. So for example, practically, um, I've had a stressful day. I've had back-to-back -back meetings and then I have an interview and it's like 4 p.m. I'm very tired. I don't want to get an interview and someone is like boring me with stories. My my, I'm naturally an integrator, but then my chemistry type switches a little bit of a driver. Like, tell me I'll be gone. 
genocide. So you want to be able to also, that's why you have to select the time of your interview. If you're interviewing in the evenings, keep it crisp. If you're interviewing in the morning, gauge the person and say, okay, oh, I didn't really need a chatting mode. Or if you're not in a chatting mode, let me just say it and be gone. Anyways, so let's go to what that looks like. So when you meet a pioneer, the person is outgoing, detailed, vast, spontaneous, versus risk, adaptable, imaginative. I'm I'm in the middle of both. So this is who they are normally. When you meet an integrator, the diplomatic, the empathic, uh, relationship oriented, you know, they they care about people when you're talking to them. They're intrinsically motivated. They're non-confrontational to an extent, you know, even if you are doing bad on interview, be like, great. But then you're actually flaunting the interview. Now, when you talk to these people, you want to make sure that you're referencing building relationships, teamwork, expressing emotions, displaying flexibility, trust people and ideas. So sometimes people's jobs actually determine what type of chemistry they might have to an extent. So if you're talking to a marketing manager, for example, and it's not, it's someone who builds campaigns, not someone who like cares about like the numbers. I don't want to go in and say, so if, if I, if I'm talking to that person, I'm like, Hey, how are you? How's your day going? That's the first question I ask in an interview. And they're like, Oh, it's actually great. It's so sunny. Oh my God. They know that ah, this one is maybe a pioneer or an integrator. So when they ask you questions like, tell me a time on your project, trust me, they're looking out for, do you value relationships with things you were saying? Do you prefer teamwork? Own some parts, okay, I was, I was responsible for this. At the same time, I work with this person, this person, that person. You want to also express emotions, like smile, like, oh yeah. You know, just be very, even if you're like, what are they saying? But, you know, just put that enthusiasm out there. Don't be dull. Uh, just play flexibility. So they would ask you questions around when you had to change a requirement, when things do not go your way. They would care about, okay, what if I shut this person down as an employee of mine? How would they react? You know, these are things that you want to be able to display. Then trust people and ideas. You want to show that too. You want to be a team player, things like that. You know, these are, these are things that you want to keep in mind. Now, two people, one person can be two or three. You know, sometimes you have a mix of, of, of some of, of some of these things. I have a link so you can also do your test afterwards. Now, if you are talking to a driver, these people, they give me a headache. You know, they're very quantitative, logical, focused, competitive, 